there's a Turkish series I saw, a Syrian, um, a Orthodox Jewish series, two Orthodox Jewish series, fascinating. Um, one about the, oh my God, I'm blanking. Yeah, I can't even think of what those would be either. Cool, I can't even think what they're called. But those, I'm sort of attend, Fowder is also a very interesting series. Fowder, which is about Israel and Palestine. I like politics, so I like to know what's going on. I know those, their films, but they're so well done. So well done. Are you ever shocked at certain aspects of the business, like, you know, reality TV, that's such a big thing. Like, are you ever shocked at some of these new aspects of the business? I mean, they've been around for a while, but still. I used to be on the, go use the treadmill a lot. And I used to listen to some of them on the treadmill and they spoke loudly, which I found I couldn't listen to certain programming because they, people spoke softer. But when I remember some of the um, stuff on Bravo, there used to be groups of women, they all talk very loud. And I could hear them with the, with the same time as using the treadmill. So I would say, oh, I'm going to listen to that person because I can't hear this one. And there was anything intimate and secretive. You no, know, I can't hear what they're saying. So I had to stop them with the treadmill, listen for a minute, and then try and guess. So that doesn't work. So for a while, I was watching Bravo, but I'm not anymore at the moment. Well, that would be the real housewives, and they're always fighting and the arguing. Housewives. Oh, the housewives are just, and I sort of absolutely enthralled by it all. Just, I said, I'll never meet these women, and I'm enthralled. And I know they're fake fighting, but I loved it. I enjoyed them thoroughly. It's really a mind. It just sucks you in, and you're hours later, you're like, I could watch this for days. Yeah. Well, I don't know about days, but for me, I have certainly enjoyed bits and pieces of that. Is there a part of the business that you haven't done that you still want to try? Oh, I'm sure there's, there's masses of things I haven't done. But I'm pretty focused on what I want to do. And I don't know till I read it. I just did a, a role in a, cowboy, in a Western, um, which was quite fun. It wasn't a big part, but it was juicy. It was the madam of the, of the local um, bordello. It was quite fun. That's fine. Yeah. I ask you this only because I am single. I have no children. I'm happy like that. You do a lot of interviews. It does come up. You always get asked, you know, and people don't believe me. Maybe they don't believe you. You know, why is it such a, well, how could you be single? Why don't you want children? You do get asked that in a lot of interviews. I say, listen, I'm very happy. Don't worry about it. My life is great. Why do you think that's still a thing and people just can't believe people like us, Jacqueline? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's a very relevant thing to life is wanting to, to have a family. Um, I didn't know what feel like. I don't feel like I knew what family was. I was uh, had a, I mean, there was my child. I didn't have a terrible childhood or anything, but I didn't feel that there was a closeness or it didn't represent anything to me. I've always felt my mother was having a very hard time. My father was a great person. My mother was a great person, but they didn't, I didn't see the connection. I didn't see them affectionate at all. And I couldn't see what was in it for my mother to be married. I knew she was mother, mommy to mommy, to my brother and I, and I, when we were with friends, that was fun. I thought friends are really good things. Friends is what I want, good friends. And that was my focus. And um, and I thought they'd be there longer than than, um, than parents and stuff and uh, family. But I've actually turned my mind around a bit because recently I've lost a lot of my good friends have gone. And it's a shocker, no question. And you wonder what will happen next. Who's going to be gone next? So that's sad. That's very sad. And. Uh, I don't really know what the defense to that. There's nothing to defend. There's nothing you can do about that. You, you, you know, you can't invent people to be good friends with. You have to have the connection. Yeah. What, looking back at your career, what advice would you give yourself just starting out? You know, this new, you know, young, like you said, there's young talent coming in every day. Like what advice would you give someone just starting out or yourself if you look back and at your beginning of your career? I wouldn't change much. I would say to thine own self be true, which is what I've done. I don't have things that I'm 
um, angry with in terms of what I've done. I've led my life the way I want to live it. I haven't, I either haven't done things that have disgusted me. I haven't been around people who've disgusted me. I've tried to avoid them. Um, I didn't do enough exercise. I didn't know enough about exercise and how, how wonderful it is to, when you get feel fit and to just deal with the realities of working long hours and needing that fitness to support you as a basic. Um, I think I would have enjoyed my body more because I didn't know that, you know, that it goes away and changes and you just, just that is something I see young people and I'm, I, I think it's important to enjoy your own body. And, um, I was very shy. I was very shy, very complex. And I was always sort of hiding, you know, hiding myself being, I was very modest and uh, about most of the time, very rarely did I ever sort of show off. I didn't, it wasn't my, it wasn't my education. It wasn't my way. And I was, um, I resisted. And that, that was always offered to me, like, so, you know, do this, do that. I said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be so desirable for people. I don't feel that way about it. I don't want to be, I want to be desirable to the man I'm with and, um, and to be embraced in a sense that doesn't threaten people. I didn't want to be threatening because I think, you know, it's a fine line. It's a bit like education. You want to be educated so you can mix generally. One of the best things about education is that it teaches you how to mix with everybody. And it's pointless if you get, if you get over-educated and you start to separate yourself as a person, as, a, as an entity, as an intelligent person, it separates you from people rather than bringing, it, bringing you together. You need to do things in life that make it easier for your life. The point of a good education is to teach you how to get on with everybody to not be judgmental and stupid and narrow-minded. That's what an education is for. That's why you need to read and you need to educate yourself so that you learn about the generosity of the spirit. And, and I'm, I've always been slightly allergic to people who show off, which is ironic because you might say that actors show off, but I don't feel that we do. I mean, I don't feel that I do. I do the job as a job and it's not something I really, I'm, I'm actually quite restrained in terms of, I mean, if I've had maybe a few drinks, maybe I'm a little more, <laughs> a little more um, nuts than I would normally be, but it's just sort of generally, I'm, I'm slightly embarrassed by massive uh, showing off. And people I'm, assume that- hmm. I was going to say, I'm allergic to people that show off as well. I, yeah. I, I, I feel it's, usually it's a sign of insecurity and most good actors are not show-offs and they're not the life and soul of the party but on the contrary they're usually rather shy and 